All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, this is episode 16, the fallacies of the pharaonic burial hypothesis. So this is something new that I'm going to be presenting here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel, which is a video series that will call into question the theory that the Egyptian pyramids were intended as pharaonic burial structures. So this is the first installation in this new video series, and today's episode will be entitled, How Are You Getting the Bodies Down in There?, which is one of my favorite questions regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids. I'm going to be presenting some very compelling arguments in today's episode, which I hope you all will enjoy. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just another reminder to definitely check out my most recent appearance on the Forbidden Knowledge News podcast. Chris and I had a really amazing conversation, and of course, during these discussions, a lot of really interesting information comes up that I haven't discussed yet here on the channel, so I highly recommend you check it out. I will leave a link in the video description below. Chris, thank you so much again for having me on the show, and thank you all so much in advance for checking out this episode, again, of the Forbidden Knowledge News podcast, link in the video description below. All right, let's begin today's episode with a review of the pharaonic burial procession. So you can see here in these images that the burial of a pharaoh was a very elaborate and sacred ceremony. And we know that to the dynastic Egyptians, the pharaoh was essentially a god or a deity of this dynastic Egyptian religion. So again, the burial ceremonies were very elaborate and sacred. And you can see in these depictions that it involved many, many people, many artifacts, and the burial of the sarcophagus and container itself. So let's remember that these burial sarcophagus were like Russian nesting dolls. So you have the body, the body is mummified, the mummified body is then placed in a sarcophagus, that sarcophagus is placed in another sarcophagus, that sarcophagus is placed in a box, that box is placed in a larger box, etc., etc. And this entire container was carried by hand to the burial site and then brought into the burial itself for the interment of this pharaonic burial. Now, again, this is a very elaborate and sacred ceremony, and they're also burying artifacts that were to be interred with the pharaoh for use in the afterlife. So all of their golden artifacts, their food, the mummified animals, etc., etc. So again, just remember as we proceed with the rest of the video how elaborate this ceremony is for the pharaonic burial. Now, Let's also take a look at the configuration of some structures that we know are pharaonic burials. So this image is an image of the burial of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. And you can see here the very large and elaborate container that actually holds the sarcophagus. So you can see here at the top a breakdown of what this sarcophagus actually entails. You have the mummified body in a wooden sarcophagus. The wooden sarcophagus is in a larger sarcophagus. The sarcophagus is in a box, and then that box is in another box, etc., etc. And you can see here on the left side that the shaft to access these rooms is actually people height and people can walk in and out of this structure very easily and there are stairs leading into the burial itself and within the burial structure we see these large rectangular rooms which are exactly what you would expect from a burial structure so a lot of people have asked what is inside of the three smaller pyramids here on the Giza Plateau? So the, uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza is over here to the right, and these are the three ancillary pyramids here on the Giza Plateau. So what do you find inside of these structures? Well, they're actually burials, and it's exactly what you would expect to see inside a dynastic Egyptian burial. You can see that there's hieroglyphs all over the walls. There are statues carved into these reliefs. There's indications of pharaonic burial on the outside of the structure. Shout out to Yusuf here that was showing us the inside of this particular chamber. And again, these are exactly what you would expect from a pharaonic burial structure. And I, well, my hypothesis is that these three smaller pyramids here on the Giza Plateau were actually built by the Nidastic Egyptians for pharaonic burials because they do not compare in any way whatsoever to the three larger pyramids that sit over to the east. Now, in this next image, this is the configuration of the burial chambers of Pharaoh Seti II. And you can see here that this is exactly what you would expect 
from a burial structure. The entrance to this burial structure is about 10 feet tall, and it's very easy to access the interior components. There is a very gradual slope leading down into the structure itself, very easy to access by human beings walking in and out of this structure, carrying the pharaonic burial, carrying the sarcophagus and the other boxes into the burial chamber, along with other, all of the other burial components and things that were to be interred with the pharaonic burial. And you can see here that inside of the structure, the entire interior chambers are decorated, which is exactly what you would expect from a burial structure. So this is the configuration, ladies and gentlemen, of pharaonic burial structures. We can see that if people were intended to go inside of these structures, they were made very accessible so that the pharaonic burial sarcophagus and the remainder of the items could be easily brought into the structure to be interred with the pharaoh. So just remember that as we proceed with the evaluation of the Egyptian pyramids themselves. So let's start here with the step pyramid of Saqqara. So let's just quickly review the evolution in the construction of this pyramid. So remember that the original configuration of the step pyramid is just this single level mastaba platform. You have your large rectangular quote unquote burial chamber. You have an inlet shaft and then an outlet shaft. Okay, so my first question is, if this was actually a pharaonic burial structure, why is there an outlet shaft? In all of the chambers that we know for sure were pharaonic burials, there's one way in and no way out. That is not the case with the Egyptian pyramids. They all have an inlet shaft and they all have an outlet shaft. Second, if this was actually a pharaonic burial structure, you would imagine that the pharaoh were, was to be buried in the rectangular burial chamber itself. However, that is not the case. The burials that were found inside of the step pyramid were all located here in the tunnels on the eastern side of the main chamber itself. And these are all decorated funerary apartments, and I'll be doing this in a later video, assessing the step pyramid specifically, but I'm gonna be introducing all of the pyramids in today's video. However, the decorations inside of these tunnels have been plastered onto the walls. They are not part of the original structure itself. They were not placed at the same time as the carving of the tunnel. So just remember that this original chamber here was intended to be the pharaonic burial chamber. However, the burials themselves were found inside of the tunnels. So a very anomalous contradiction. And there's a couple other things that I'm gonna be discussing here. So let's look at this original inlet shaft leading into the primary chamber itself. This is a very, very steep shaft. And in all of these larger pyramids, there are no stairs leading into these structures. It is a very, very steep shaft. And if there are any stairs, these were added later by the dynastic Egyptians. So remember, the evolution of this structure is critical to understanding its function, and its function most certainly was not a dynastic Egyptian burial. So let's just look at the interior of the primary um, digestion chamber within the step pyramid of Saqqara. And you can see here that this is the original inlet shaft leading into the chamber itself. And all of these small bricks were added later by the dynastic Egyptian. And again, there are zero stairs leading into this chamber itself. And the inlet shaft is extremely steep. There is no way that you are walking up and down this incredibly steep incline let alone carrying in a burial sarcophagus and all of the other items. Again, these small bricks and quote unquote steps that kind of lead down into this thing were all added later by the dynastic Egyptians. So you will also notice that the inlet shaft terminates about 30 feet before the ground of the chamber itself. So even if you were bringing the sarcophagus into this chamber, you would then have to build a wooden scaffold system inside of this chamber to then carry the sarcophagus down into the lower section of the chamber. So my next question is, so let's say you do bring the pharaonic body down into this burial chamber. Are you then going to remove this plug here in your stone sarcophagus, squeeze the body down into the hole, drop them down into the container, plug the thing back up, and that is your pharaonic burial? I think not, and we know for sure that there were no pharaonic burials found inside of this container. So what is the function of this container inside of this large rectangular chamber? Well, I can say for sure that none of these components were originally intended as pharaonic burials, and we can see that evidence in the location of the burials itself that were found inside of this structure. So very anomalous details that are, again, contradictory to the hypothesis that this structure was intended as a burial. 
So now let's take a quick journey into the newly opened southern tomb at the Steppe Pyramid Complex of Saqqara. And this area is located on the southern side of the complex. And you can see here that the configuration of this structure is very similar to the interior components of the Steppe Pyramid itself. There is a very steep shaft leading into the quote unquote burial chamber. And all of these blocks were either added later by the Ministry of Antiquities. This is a new staircase here. And some of these were actually added by the dynastic Egyptians. These staircases are not part of the original structure itself. And if these structures were intended as burials, the stairs themselves would have been carved with stone. And that is exactly what we find in the Valley of the Kings and all of these other pharaonic burial sites that the stairs leading into the structures were carved out of stone. They are part of the original structure and they were intended to be incorporated in the function of those burials. Because again, you need the stairs to be able to carry your sarcophagus into the structure itself. That is not the case with any of the larger Egyptian pyramids and all of these stairs were added later. So the staircase leading down into this southern pit actually terminates, again, about 30 or 40 feet prior to the floor of the chamber. So again, even if you are bringing a body down in here, you would need a wooden staircase or wooden scaffolding similar to what we have here in metal today to bring the body down into the chamber itself. Now, a couple of things to point out, these recesses here and all of these small bricks were actually added later. I believe this is a Roman era Christian niche and there's like a little uh, shrine or something inside of this little area, but this is not part of the dynastic Egyptian work. This came around much later. Now, again, look at this sarcophagus or this container here itself. Again, it has a removable stone plug in the container. So are we pulling the stone plug out, squishing the body down into the hole, plugging the thing back up? I think not, because that is not a very sacred or elaborate burial procession for we are essentially the god of these dynastic Egyptians. All right, next image here, you can see again the bricks and the stones that were added into this descending shaft leading into the pit here in the southern tomb. All of this stuff was added later. It was not part of the original structure. There were zero stairs inside of this chamber. It was not meant to be accessed by human beings bringing a body into this structure. All right, next up is the Red Pyramid of Dashur. And here's where this theory gets really interesting. So again, the only opening to the Red Pyramid's internal chambers is here. And this is really, really high up off the ground. And remember, there are no stairs leading up to this opening. This pyramid was originally cased with flat limestone. There were absolutely no stairs. So if this was a pharaonic burial, you would have to build a wooden scaffold on the outside of this structure. Your, your pharaonic burial procession could lead up to the scaffold. You're then going to unload your sarcophagus. You're going to drag the sarcophagus up the wooden scaffold. And then what? Are you going to slide the golden sarcophagus containing the body of your pharaoh down this shaft into the inner chambers? This shaft is at best a three by four shaft. A human being cannot stand up inside of this shaft. So there is absolutely no way that someone is carrying a pharaonic burial sarcophagus into this structure. You would have to, again, slide it with ropes down this shaft. Again, were the dynastic Egyptians capable of doing something like this? 100%. But it is absolutely not compatible with what we know of the elaborate ceremony that was designed for the burial of a pharaoh or a god. And again, there are zero depictions of this scaffolding process. Show me one picture of any dynastic Egyptian burial going into an Egyptian pyramid. They do not exist, and these structures are not intended for pharaonic burials. So again, let's just look at the configuration of the Red Pyramid here. And on the right, you can see the configuration of the interior components. Again, what you would have to do is build a wooden scaffold out here on the outside of the structure. You're then going to unload your sarcophagus, which you can't fit much more than the sarcophagus itself, let alone the box or any of the other burial items that are intended to go inside this structure. So you're gonna build your scaffold here on the outside. You're gonna unload your sarcophagus. You're then gonna slide it with a rope system, slide your Pharaoh's body down into this chamber. Again, you would have to have people waiting down in here to unload that sarcophagus, and then you're somehow going to drag that sarcophagus up here into this final burial chamber. So now, is that physically possible? 
100%. And again, any civilization that was capable of building pyramids like this could certainly figure out how to get the body into the pyramid. However, the process itself is not indicative of what we would expect from a pharaonic burial. There is nothing sacred or elaborate about sliding a body down into a shaft with ropes and then carrying it up by hand into this final burial chamber. And you would have to build a scaffold inside of the pyramid itself, very similar to what we see inside of the structure today, to be able to get that sarcophagus up into the final burial chamber. Again, my question is, where are the depictions of this process? If this was actually occurring, we should have at least some evidence inside of these structures or inside the artwork or against some depiction by the dynastic Egyptians that this process was occurring to get these pharaonic burials into the structures. Not even just to mention just the body itself, but what about all of the ancillary items, all the burial goods, the other mummies, the golden artifacts, etc., etc.? How are you getting it down into the structure? Because again, if you look at the configuration of this pyramid, there are absolutely no stairs leading into this structure. This modern uh, staircase here, it's not even a staircase, it's like a wooden ladder. This is modern, and this is an absolutely steep and flat stone shaft leading down into this structure and it is incredibly steep if you didn't have this wooden ladder system in here you could very easily just slide down into the belly of the pyramid so again this is not meant to be accessed by human beings going in and out of this structure carrying anything whatsoever this is a functional machine that was designed for the production of chemicals on an industrial scale and it is absolutely ludicrous that is implied that you are again sliding your pharaonic burial body down into the structure you're then going to drag it through this chamber you're going to build a scaffold in here to carry the body up into this final chamber doesn't make sense to me so now let's take a look at the bent pyramid of dashur now this structure has two openings into the interior components you have one here on the north side and then one way up here on the west side so again if these shafts were utilized to deliver pharaonic burial bodies into the structure why you have two shafts? If this is the one that you were gonna to use to deliver the body into the structure, why go through the effort of engineering and building this second shaft system? To embed these shaft systems within the body of the pyramids itself is one of the most complex pieces of engineering and construction that went into building the structures themselves. So why go through all the effort if you're not even gonna utilize this shaft? Again, if you're bringing it into this opening here, you have to build a wooden scaffold to be able to deliver the body into the hole. Same thing on the western shaft. If this western shaft was utilized to deliver the body into the burial structure, you have to build a massive wooden scaffold here on the outside of the structure. Where are the depictions of this process? And again, this seems very rather unceremonial if this is the burial process for your god to just slide them down into the hole and then drag the body up into the burial chamber itself so again this is the configuration of the bent pyramid of dashur again you would have to build a scaffold here on the outside of the structure you're then going to slide your sarcophagus down this slide here into the burial chamber itself but what happens when you get the sarcophagus down into this chamber there are no stairs inside of these chambers this is a rectangular chamber at best and there is no way to get this body up here into the burial chamber itself which this upper chamber is what they indicate would have been the actual burial chamber you would have to build a wooden scaffold or staircase system inside of this structure you would then carry your sarcophagus up here into your upper separation chamber. You're then going to drag your sarcophagus through this connecting tunnel. Again, what? Dragging it with ropes? A golden sarcophagus containing the, the body of a god. You're just going to tie it to ropes and then drag it through this chamber here and then drag it up into your burial chamber? That really doesn't seem to make sense. Again, not a very ceremonial burial process. And again, maybe you're using this shaft to get the body into the chamber. Well, again, where's your massive wooden scaffold or staircase leading up to this shaft? And then again, you're just going to drop the body down into the shaft, drag it over here into this burial chamber. Again, a rather unceremonial process if this is actually what was occurring to get the bodies into these structures. Very anomalous. 
and not compatible at all with what we know was the pharaonic burial process. And these are just a couple of quick images showing the shaft leading down into the lower separation chamber of the bent pyramid. And these are leading in from the north side of the structure. Again, you can see how steep this shaft is. It is an absolute pain in the ass getting in and out of the bent pyramid. Again, these shafts were not intended for human beings to go in and out of these structures. Again, you could barely, this is again about three feet high right here. How are you getting the stuff in and out of this structure? How are you getting all of your elaborate golden artifacts in and out of this pyramid? Again, what are you going to do? Tie the sarcophagus to ropes and just slide it down into this hole? Again, a rather unceremonious process if this is what you are doing to bury your god. Here are just some depictions of the lower separation chamber of the bent pyramid. And yes, I am referring to these from their technical names that I utilize in the book. Again, so let's say your pharaonic burial sarcophagus gets slid down here in the northern shaft. Again, there are no stairs inside of this structure. You would have to tie that thing up to rope. You're then going to drag your sarcophagus up here to this lower se upper separation chamber. You're then going to build a scaffold or something of that nature here in this chamber. You're going to drag the body up here to the connecting shaft, and then you're going to drag the body through the connecting passage. And I can tell you for sure that it is no easy process to even just get myself through this connecting passage, let alone a massive golden sarcophagus containing someone's body. So not compatible whatsoever with what we see of the pharaonic burial. And this is the wooden scaffold and staircase that is inside of the bent pyramid today. This is very similar to what they would have had to build inside of this structure to be able to bury their pharaonic gods. Again, is the dynastic Egyptian civilization capable of doing that? 100%. But do we have any evidence, depictions, indications whatsoever that this is the case? Absolutely not. And this has got to be one of my favorite examples of this line of reasoning. So again, the theme for today's video is how you getting the bodies down in there, right? So let's start here on the northern side of the Great Pyramid. There is only one original opening to this structure. So this descending shaft leads all the way down here into the subterranean chamber. So let's say again, we're going to go bury our pharaonic burial in here, the burial of Khufu, right? So we build the scaffold on the outside of the structure, and then we're going to unload our sarcophagus containing the pharaoh's body. We're going to tie this sarcophagus to a bunch of ropes, and we're going to slide the sarcophagus down here into the subterranean chamber. Well, then what do you do with it then? Once the body is down here in the subterranean chamber, do you then tie it to ropes and drag it up here through the well shaft? into the grand gallery to then drag the body up here into the king's chamber and place it into this sarcophagus that does not seem like a very sacred or ceremonial burial process and it is absolute nonsense to imply that that is what actually occurred inside of these these pyramids this is not a burial structure and the process that i just described to get the body inside here is not what they were doing to bury the pharaohs i will also mention that the container inside of the king's chamber is large enough to fit a grown human body. Yes, but you cannot fit anything else inside of that container. Again, we know that these pharaonic burials were like Russian nesting dolls. It was the mummy, and the mummy is in a sarcophagus, and the sarcophagus is in another container, and that container is in another container. And these things get very, very big very quickly. Again, a human being could hypothetically lie down inside of this container, but there is absolutely no room whatsoever for a golden sarcophagus or anything else containing the physical body itself. So again, there are a very whole lot of details that are completely incompatible in regard to the hypothesis that this is a pharaonic burial structure. Again, my favorite one, how are you getting the bodies down in there? This is the prime example uh, that these structures were definitely not intended as burial. Because once you get the burial body down into the subterranean chamber, it is absolutely ludicrous <laughs> that you're then going to tie this thing to rope and drag it up here through the well shaft. There's no other way to get inside of this pyramid except for the original opening that leads into the subterranean chamber. All right, so the central pyramid, again, this one, I will admit, is actually accessible. And you could stand up inside of this, this shaft system here leading into the primary reaction chamber. You can stand up here in this area, but that is not the case with the northern shafts themselves. And again, if this was a pharaonic burial structure, 
why go through the extra effort of engineering and building this secondary shaft system? Again, we saw in the burial of Tutankhamun and the burial of Seti II that the burial chambers were very easily accessible and they did not go through superfluous or excessive engineering to overly complicate these burial structures. They had to be easy to get in and out of, to deliver the pharaonic burial components into the structure, seal the thing off and call it a day. There is absolutely no purpose for going through the additional steps of engineering these complicated interior components if this thing was intended as a pharaonic barrel. They would have made it easy to get in and out, but that is not the case of what we see here in any of the Egyptian pyramids. All right, and last but not least, we have Newgrange and the passage chamber structures of Ireland. So the last chapter of the book, after a quarry receives the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, he returns home to Ireland and applies the knowledge that he's received during the degrees to rediscovering the long lost purpose of the ancient passage chamber structures of Ireland. So again, in regard to the theme of today's video, how are you getting the bodies in there? You could definitely drag a body into these structures. However, the remains that they found inside of these passage chambers are actually cremated remains. And I find that very, very dubious that an ancient civilization was simultaneously practicing ritual cremation and ceremonial burial. You either do one or the other if you're an ancient civilization. Secondly, all of the hundreds of passage chamber mounds that are located across Ireland are all built with the exact same configuration, which contains three separate chambers. Now they imply that these are burials for individuals. So if you're just burying one guy or one woman inside of this structure, why are there three separate chambers? So again, there are some details about these structures that are not compatible with the burial hypothesis, specifically in regard to the Irish mythology itself. So the Irish mythology says that new grange and structures like Carrowkeel are directly connected to the mythological gods of Ireland, the Tua de Danann. And this mythological race of individuals had science and technology. And we know that the practitioners of this ancient science, this ancient chemistry, were perceived by onlookers to be magicians and practitioners of, chem or of magic. Because again, to the uninitiated, someone practicing chemistry would appear to someone doing magic. And that's exactly what we find in the mythology surrounding these structures and their connections to the Tua de Danon. So again, there are absolutely no indications that these structures were originally intended as burials. So to summarize my conclusions for today's video, I will end with this. Everybody getting this so far? So what? I guess they just don't make them like they used to, huh? No! Nobody ever made them like this. I mean, the architect was either a certified genius or an authentic wacko. Ray, for a moment, pretend that I don't know anything about metallurgy, engineering, or physics, and just tell me what the hell is going on. You never studied. And just another reminder to definitely check out my most recent appearance on the Forbidden Knowledge News podcast. Chris and I had a really amazing conversation. And of course, during these discussions, a lot of really interesting information comes up that I haven't discussed yet here on the channel. So I highly recommend you check it out. I will leave a link in the video description below. Chris, thank you so much again for having me on the show. And thank you all so much in advance for checking out this episode again of the Forbidden Knowledge News podcast. Link in the video description below. Hello. And just a quick reminder for anyone that's first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available on my website, www.thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can grab a copy of the book, pick up a t-shirt, whatever you'd like. Either way, it really helps us support these videos and support the project. So I really appreciate it. And thank you all so much in advance. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. This was episode 16, The Fallacies of the Pharaonic Burial Hypothesis, first installation entitled, How Are You Getting the Bodies Down In There? I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'm gonna be doing more of these type of videos coming up very soon, but in the next episode, we're gonna be resuming the Land of Chem 2021 Research Expedition Recap, and we're gonna explore the Bent Pyramid of Dashur and discuss the function of that structure. I have some very exciting research from that expedition that I can't wait to share, but I think that's it for today's video, so I will see you next time.